Our scripture reading for today is from uh, Mark chapter 10, starting with 17. In our scripture reading for this morning, you hear about a person running up to Jesus, and he asks, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? So Jesus quotes some of the Ten Commandments, and the man says, he has done all of these since he was a boy. But then Jesus looks at him and he loves him. So Jesus says, Okay, you lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come. Come. Follow me. Now, you have to remember that Jesus says this because he loves the guy. The man runs up to Jesus. He's been earning his way to God his whole life. He's done everything that the Torah demands. And on top of that, it turns out that this guy is fairly wealthy. And so, in the eyes of his society, God has been intentionally blessing this guy. Basically, everything says that this guy should be as close to God as a person could possibly get. But Jesus has a whole different lesson to teach this earnest and faithful follower of God. Jesus wants to teach him that you cannot earn your way to God. So Jesus gives the guy one last challenge. Go, sell all that you own and give it to the poor, and then come and follow me. And the guy realizes that he cannot do that. And he walks away grieving because he could not jump this one last hurdle. He could not climb the last peak of his spiritual mountain. Now, a lot of times people get on a spiritual quest in order to get closer to God. Some people will set a goal of reading the whole Bible from beginning to end. Other people will make it a goal to work up to giving 10% tithe to the church. And other people will make it their goal to forgive everyone who has ever wronged them, especially if they have some really difficult people to forgive. Now, all of these things are worthy spiritual goals, but they all start with the wrong basic assumption that you can earn your way to get closer to God. You see, the danger of working towards any of those excellent goals is that it may lead you further down the path that you are the one who has to get good enough or do some amazing thing to get closer to or to discover God. And yet the reality is that Jesus has already done all of the work of getting you closer to God. Jesus has completely removed the separation between you and God. Jesus has forgiven you of all of your sins, all of your unworthiness, all of your guilt. They have no place in your relationship with God. God loves you just like you are. You don't have to get any more perfect. God sees you. God sees you just like you might see your children or grandchildren. Maybe they don't do exactly what you would like to do, like them to do, but you still love them completely and you do anything for them, anything that's good for them. 
But, but whether they are the best cheerleader or the best football player or the best student in school, these may be nice, but they do not earn your child any more of your love. It's simply bonus. And it might actually hurt your relationship with your child. If they always thought that they had to earn your love, that kind of expectation on either their part or on your part would put a negative twist on what was originally love. So you cannot earn God's love or grace. It is, it is like the air you breathe. God is as close to you as your own breath. You are God's loving child forever. It is interesting that in our scripture reading, the guy who runs up to Jesus actually answers his own question when he asks, what must, what must I do to inherit eternal life? In reality, you do nothing to receive your inheritance. It is a gift handed down to you. In the same way, Jesus has already passed down your inheritance of eternal life. You are living in it this very moment, and you will be living in it for the rest of your life. For instance, you did not have to do any great achievement to be sitting here in this place this morning, and yet... You are surrounded by people who love you. You have the gift of this crisp, clear morning, the beautiful sunshine. At this moment, you are probably fairly healthy, are, are working towards those ends. You have enough food and clothing and shelter so that you probably don't have to worry about those things. You know that God is all around you and that God loves you. In this moment, you are filled with the gifts of medical technology. You're filled with vaccines that keep away some of the worst diseases humanity has ever known. Science and technology give you glasses and shoes and cars and campers and, and an abundance of food. The trees are creating new oxygen for you to breathe. And you have, and you have this word of God that Jesus has given to you to remind you and assure you of God's love and grace and that eternity is already yours. And so, out of all this abundance of life, if you want to bless people throughout your life, if you want to be the best person that you can, if you want to read the Bible from cover to cover, even though it's not the way I would recommend reading it, if you want to practice forgiveness, and if you want to try to give more to God's mission, then by all means do these things, but not to earn your way to God, but as a loving response to all that you have already been given. In the name of Jesus. Amen.